Good evening, everyone. It is uh, that time of the month for our uh, monthly uh, Delta Amateur Radio Club monthly board meeting. It's uh, approximately 6.30 on July the 2nd. Uh, welcome, everyone. Perry, if I could ask a favor of you real quick. Uh, we're going to have two... We're going to have two guests uh, this evening well, until a little bit later. Uh, Tyler and Adam will be guests for just a moment. But if you could kick us, kick us off with a quick roll call, I sure would appreciate it. Absolutely. Joe Plunk, President. President. Perry Hayes, Secretary, President. Jim Martin, Treasurer. Present. Immediate past President, Ty McMahon. Absent. Director of Programs, John Reiners. Here and accounted for. Director of Meetings and Special Events, Scott Adams. Here. Director of Publications, Mike Harrison. Present. Director of Training, Joe Lowenthal. Here. Club Repeater Trustee, Dan Fleek. Here. We do have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you much, sir. I appreciated that. Well, good evening, everyone. Glad to jump into the board meeting. Uh, did every just a quick order of business? Did everybody get the email and the shared agenda uh, ahead of time? Hopefully, everybody got a chance to look at that. So uh, everything's kind of not a surprise. If you didn't, please let me know. Um, all right. And the other thing, I just wanted to take a real quick minute and just say a field day was a blast. I had a fantastic time spending the evening and most of the day uh, at field day. Uh, put over 400 contacts in the books. I'm sorting all the logs and hopefully we'll have all of that. For the membership meeting, I hope to have a, a grid tracker-esque display of the star, kind of the, all the pinpoints that we made for contacts for the membership meeting. So I'm working on getting that done. Uh, anybody have any other uh, quick antidotal points about field day? We'll talk more about it a little bit later, but uh, well, that was just kind of my opening comment. One of the tracks that I was planning on for um, uh, the meeting was a recap of field day. So would you be comfortable presenting that? Um, I would absolutely be uh comfortable presenting that as a, a kind of a tag team, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I can talk about my struggles and what I learned. So it's not a failure. I learned something and uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> talk to Carolyn and see if she can, uh, if she's planning on being there, if she can talk about her tremendous, absolutely awesome, fantastic successes. Oh, John, she was, I'm she having a hard time hearing amazing. you. Yeah. John, do you have a different microphone? All right. Nothing. Okay, you're 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 a little muffled on my end. John Reiner's or Joe Plunk? No, John, John Reiner. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the quick piece of business that I'd like to do before we kind of get into the meat of the board meeting. Um, uh, right now we have two guests with us. We have uh Tyler Henley, um, KQ4 QEV and Adam White, K4SPB. Um, both of these gentlemen have agreed to fill open positions on the current board of directors. Tyler has agreed to step into the vice president role, and Adam has agreed to step into the PIO role. So with that, before we get too deep into the meeting, I'd love to make uh, an appointment of both of these gentlemen to their respective positions. So the appointment that I'd like to make is I'd like to appoint Tyler Henley, KQ4 QEV, to the role of vice president that is currently open. So that's appointment number one. Um, are there any objections to that? All right, all in favor? Hi. All right. Aye. Well, Tyler, welcome on board as our vice president. So let me get this other piece of business taken care of as well. Uh, the second appointment that I would like to make um, is for Adam White, 
to the open position of PIO. Um, so with that, I would like uh, to the board to consider his appointment. Uh, is there any objection to his appointment? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. So Adam, welcome on board the board as our PIO. Thanks, everybody. Fantastic. Oh, welcome. And there'll be some more, some more work uh, and more introductions and just kind of, we're not going to, uh, as much as we think we might, we're not going to, we're trying not to throw you in the deep end and say swim. We're going to try to give you the, the guided tour. That, they still have to help me right. with repeaters. <laughs> oh, of course. Every, everybody's on for that job. Um, hey, Joe, can, uh, can I request uh, them to send in a bio uh, so I can update the um, the thing on the website and then also contact information so I can update Sparks. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you beat me to it, but that was okay. on the list of my <laughs> agenda. But I'm glad I'm glad you beat me to it. So Super. Tyler and Adam, what that is, is if you go out to the DeltaClub.org website, um, each of the board of directors members has a short bio and it doesn't have to be long. It could be as simple as a sentence or as long as a paragraph. Just a little bit about what your background is and kind of what your uh, lead into amateur radio was and just a little bit of background about you. Excuse me. And then the second piece is if you look in Sparks at the very end of Sparks, all of the board of directors have our contact information there. Now, um, I will say quickly uh, both Tyler and Adam, you will have a uh, Tyler, you will have vice president at deltaclub.org as a deltaclub.org email. And uh, Adam, currently the one that's currently set up is PIO. Um, if you prefer a little different one, we can certainly adjust that. But that is also available um, as a Gmail. We have a, uh, the club has Google Workspace. Uh, Google has graciously, as a nonprofit, given us free access to Google Workspace for our, our board of directors. Uh, so that is what is serving our email and our shared documents and shared drives and other things. So those will be your contact emails. If uh, if you'd like to adjust that, let me know. We can certainly get that adjusted. Um, and that's what Mike was asking you for, was the bio and your contact information so that he can update both the website and Sparks. Yeah, Any so questions on could, that? If you guys could just send that over to me before Sparks publishes, hopefully before Saturday. Yes, and, and Mike, I, I, I will confess, I'm going to try very hard to not be the last one to get his articles in. <laughs> Thank you. I'm telling on I'm telling on myself. Yeah, and I would appreciate right. it. And one other thing is, uh, if there are pictures or an article or something like that from field day, please get them to me early and not on like Saturday or Sunday because uh, I hate to put like 30 pictures in, you know, uh, on Sunday afternoon. So uh, the earlier you can send me that stuff would be incredible. Thank you. Right. Any questions on that, Tyler or Adam? No, thanks. Not right now. All right. Fantastic. Our next item on our agenda is um, board, past board minutes, if there are any uh, approvals or edits that we need to those, as well as our uh, member meeting minutes if there are any edits or approvals to those i know perry you sent those out is there a perry you want to open up the discussion on that yeah thank you joe uh i actually jumped on the meeting minutes uh pretty early last month and got those out they're basically uh finalized as i sent them out uh, kind of in the middle of june uh, Joe Lowenthal had two suggestions. One of those was to adjust the time uh, for his presentation that he gave at the Collierville Library. Uh, the other suggestion that Joe had was that Adam had agreed at the meeting uh, to join the board as PIO. 
So I included those in the minutes, but those were the only two changes from the uh, June meeting minutes that were sent out pretty early, about the middle of last June. So there shouldn't be any surprises or anything that uh, anybody um, didn't know about other than those two uh, changes. Okay. And Thank the you, board director's minutes were published in the uh, June issue of Sparks. Indeed they were. Are there any uh, questions, concerns, or any additional edits to the minutes as Perry has proposed them? All right, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes as sent out by our secretary, Perry Hayes. Second. All right. And that was seconded by Mike. So uh, the motion is made by Jim, KD4FUU, is to approve the minutes as sent out by Perry, our illustrious secretary, seconded by Mike Harris and KM4MRW. Illustrious? No, you don't want to be illustrious? Okay. I don't know Fair about enough. that. Our Sorry. awesome secretary. We'll go with that. Um, all in favor of that, of that motion, please say aye. 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 All right, that motion carried. And that trans transitions us nicely into membership renewals. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, during the month of June, we had three applications for membership that were submitted to the club. There were three, uh, two renewals and one uh, new membership application. The first one was a family. That was Rick and Barbara Burke. Rick is call sign KD4CBX and Barbara is KD4EYV. And they applied for a renewal of their membership. Josh Cunningham, Kilo Quebec 4, India Oscar Sierra submitted a new member application. And he included information on there that he is active in Aries and also is a spotter for Skywarn. And our last application was a renewal, and that came from Clyde Gitman, Alpha Foxtrot 4 Zulu Sierra, and his was a renewal. And I would recommend to the board that we accept all of those applications. I'd second that. All right, so the motion that we have is to uh, accept uh, all of the applications and renewals as presented by Perry and uh, shown in the agenda uh, and seconded by, I think that was Mike that seconded that or was it Jim? That uh, was Jim. Jim, thank you, Jim. I apologize. I, I missed the second. Oh. I was unmuting myself. Uh, and seconded by Jim. Um, all in favor of that, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. All right, thank you, Perry. Appreciate thank you, you uh, bringing that up and keeping that all straight for us. And we'll talk about membership in a little bit. I've got some interesting details that I wanted to share with the rest of the board. And that brings us up nicely into our treasurer's report. All right. Oh, and you've got it all up there for me already. Excellent. I don't have to bother sharing. I spent so much I've, time clearing, I've up, clearing up my browsers, making sure that you know it was nice and tidy. All right, so uh, for the month of June, uh, we started the month with a uh, beginning balance of $21,391.11 in our checking account. We had a whopping $443 in deposits. That includes $398 for um, Huntsville uh, bus fares and $45 for uh, two of those renewals that um, that we just uh, discussed. Uh, I guess Perry has an application and some money uh, for me to deposit from the June meeting that I was unable to attend. Um, and then 
Uh, actually, so that's that's the forty five dollars. So that brings us to a total of four forty three. We had no checks written, no withdrawals made for the month. So that brings us to the end of the month uh, with an ending balance of twenty one thousand eight hundred thirty five dollars and eleven cents. Uh, okay. No, I, I'm sorry. I did have one question. Yes, sir. Um, on the bus fare deposit of two hundred ninety nine dollars, I'm assuming that that was three checks of ninety nine dollars each. That was two checks for a hundred and one check for ninety nine. Was the two ninety nine? Okay. Okay. So you're so they were a hundred dollars instead of ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that is that correct, Joe? Am I, am I remembering that correctly? Yes. Okay. Um. No major. Uh, the only, I was just wanting. To, I just was wanting to clarify that because the actual fare is ninety nine dollars as we've been advertising it. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that it was the whoever wrote the check was okay writing it for a hundred dollars even. That's why yeah. the math was two ninety nine instead of. I, I was expecting it to be two ninety seven. That's right. all. I understood. Yep. Um, all right. I apologize for. Uh, go ahead. That's all right. I was just going to say that uh, our CDs are, you know, status quo. Um, I won't, won't, uh, you know, go through those line by line, but they continue to grow, and and we'll uh, deal with those later this or one of those later this year when it uh, when it comes up for renewal. Okay. Um, also. As Joe knows, but because uh, I had to loop him in on this, um, the catch up game that I was playing with the state for our charitable um, status, um, that's been submitted. The um, So that's for um, the last three years and I'm waiting for them to approve that uh, before I can file the last one, which is for last year. So that's um, so that's in progress, and um, and hopefully it'll be completed shortly. Um, it did take me a little bit longer than I expected to submit that information uh, because the numbers that I had when I went back and looked at the first year, it was uh, the year when we had COVID, our first year of COVID, and the um, the records were not real clear. Um, or th there were some changes in the way that the record keeping was done. So I basically went through and and made sure that all the numbers were correct for the, the previous year before I became treasurer. So so I'm confident that what I submitted is 100% accurate. So, um, I and, also and have, we, I'm sorry? I was going to say, and we appreciate that. Yeah, so moving forward, it's it whoever takes my position will have uh will have no question about that type of thing. And I'll give proper uh turnover so that this doesn't happen again. Then the last thing that I have is um we've we've had some discussions going back and forth about um our uh tax exempt status um for charitable organizations, which would allow us to make purchases tax-free. And so I have completed a, a form for the Tennessee Department of Revenue, but it requires um, some type of documentation from the IRS. So I don't, I don't know, it, it's, it, it's, it's unclear as to exactly what that documentation is. So I think I'm gonna have to call the state and ask them, is it just a copy of our uh, form 990N, or is it, um, or is there, you know, some, some other uh, document that they need for that? And yes. Dan, I may reach out to you to see if you have any uh, any information about that, or if, or if uh, you know somebody that you know personally. Yeah, there's a. I looked it up once or so ago. You can go out and request a letter from the IRS that says, hey, we're a legit uh, organization and here's our information. Yeah, and I haven't figured out where that is. I've done 
many searches. I've watched uh, video webinars on uh, on how to you know handle these types of uh, you know scenarios. One thing I would like to mention, and I, I guess we'll have to come to some type of agreement as to how we're going to do this. Using our tax using our tax exempt status would not be an issue at all with like the purchase that we need to make from DX Engineering because we'll be sending them a check. Any other purchases that we make, say you know, you know, refreshments for the club, um, they have to be purchased using either a check or a credit card or debit card in the name of the club in order to do that. So it's so it's not like Scott can go to Sam's like he normally does for us, makes a purchase and then submits the receipts to me and then I reimburse them. I mean, we I can continue to do uh, that, but I wouldn't be able to or he wouldn't be able to get the tax exempt status unless he pays with a club check. Um a clarification on that mm -hmm. uh, from personal experience. Um, both my Sam's Club and Costco card have uh, attached a tax exempt certificate for um, a Girl Scout troop that uh, uh, my wife's Girl Scout troop. Mm, okay. um, so they don't they don't have to have the funding come from. Um, a debit or credit card that's in the club's name, what they have to have is they have to have this tax exempt certificate attached to your membership ID. And when you do that, it's not a big deal. You just go to the desk, file it, and then you'll swipe your card and they'll say, is this taxable or exempt? And you answer yes or no, and they'll ring it with tax or not ring it without tax. And then you would pay for it. And then you would ask the club to reimburse you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Joe, I got a question on that. While we're on this topic, sure. Uh, mm -hmm. When you use the Sam's card for the no tax, do you actually stand in line to check out, or do you use uh, your your app to uh, make uh, your purchases? I have never done it any other way than standing in line. Um, I can um, ask my lovely bride. Um, who does that on a much more frequent basis than me and uh, get you some clarification on that if you would like. Yeah, I, I see it in the app. I see it on the app that you can have to have a, a thing, but I just want to know because I go and I just, I never stand in line. I do the, I do the app and I, I've been doing the app since COVID. So that's what I was wondering. Yep. Okay. All right. I just, yeah. Just... My, my, my wife loves the app. She loves that. She walks in, checks everything out, walks out. It's she loves it. So I understand. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Jim, I posted yep. a link in the chat. Okay. Uh, it, an affirmation letter is what you're looking for from the IRS. Okay. And that one gives you the information on what you need to get it. Okay. Yeah. See that that's the same. Okay. That's actually it's the exact same link that I went to earlier. Okay. And, uh, but I was, it was not clear to me as, as to what exactly or how exactly I would go about um, grabbing that. But this, um, Dan, you want me to let me, uh, set the security and you can share your screen if you want to walk through that link real quick. Um, Okay, let's see here. Well, it says, yeah, okay, you can contact them by phone, letter, or fax to request an affirmation letter. Okay. Yeah, you... Uh... Sorry, I never share on Teams. It's, I mean, uh, Zoom, it's always on Teams. Joe, you got to drop your screen, I believe, to... Yep. Let him share. He should be able to to steal it, but I will stop my share. No, oh, it wouldn't let me. Go ahead, sir. Um. Yeah, here I'll just do this. Yeah, I. 
It's on that screen I just checked on the customer account services. Uh, basically, let's call the phone number. Okay. You know what? I'm I'm looking at it now in this looks this looks different in uh in Chrome than it did in Edge. So okay. All right. So let me sh let me share back out and we'll talk about it real quick just because right. I can call them. All right. So here's the screen that uh Dan shared for us. Yeah. I just clicked on the customer account services link and the charities and nonprofits. Yep. And there's a phone number there. Yep. So there's the toll free number. So I'll reach out to them to make sure that I have the, or that I provide whatever information they need. I think that would be an excellent thing for the club because that would save us. I mean, every it makes our pennies go a little further. So I think that would be a great thing for us to go ahead and start leveraging that, especially if it's uh, um, some of the things that we've got going on. So it could probably uh, save uh, Jim, us thanks. two or three hundred dollars a year, potentially. That's that's all I have for this evening, unless you guys have any questions for me. All right, let me reshare our agenda. Thank you, Dan. Yep. All right, thank you, Dan. Appreciate you uh, making that available. And uh, Jim, uh, thanks for looking into that. I would entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted. So moved. All right. So Perry and Joe second. So Perry makes a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted. Seconded by Joe Lowenthal, WA4 OBM. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> all right. The motion carries. Um, we do have a couple of uh, bills that we are that are well. One's not a bill per se. I believe it's a two hundred dollar donation to the Mid America Baptist Theological Seminary, and one is an actual bill. Um, uh, Joe, you want to talk about the two hundred dollars for the seminary? Yeah, actually, there's a, another one. I thought Jim, you'd bring it up. Uh, one hundred and two dollars to Huntsville Ham Fest for the two tables and the and the one entry fee. Uh, I've submitted uh, that to Jim already. Uh, but that's correct. Uh, yes. And then all, the two hundred dollars is how much was that, please? One hundred and two dollars. Forty five dollars a table plus one mandatory twelve dollar entry fee. Okay. Uh, the two hundred dollars we've paid, uh, we've given uh, Mid America uh, two hundred dollars. We gave a hundred back in, I believe, September, and then one in December. I believe is that correct, Jim? Do you remember? That sounds right. Yeah. So there, and there we've yes. normally given our supporting. Uh, uh, facility 300 a year so uh, 100 of it is to catch up and then 100 to go forward uh, I did talk to my contact at uh, Ellendale Church of Christ and they really haven't gotten into the downstairs yet uh, they haven't finished that up and it'll be quite a while before they get the upstairs finished It'll, they, he was saying probably December or so. Uh, they're very slow on it. I think they're having to go back to their insurance company to get money for the lights upstairs because they were damaged. Uh, and that had not been included in their uh, 
and and the money that they got from the insurance company. As far as he he indicated. Okay, so are they, just a quick question on that, and we'll circle back around to the bill. Um, are they still interested in us coming back to them at some point when they get things put back together? Uh, I think we would be uh, welcomed back, yes. Okay. Uh, that could have some intriguing options for us uh, in the future. We'll talk about that as we go forward, but we got to get there first. Yeah. Um, and I did let's talk, talk about to, the. I did talk to Randy and asked him if, if you know, for another at least another six months, and he said he would uh, present it. Are we good at uh, the seminary through the end of the year, or? Uh, I'm uh, not sure. Uh, I can I can talk to him. Uh, I was just touching base with him to see if, if we would be, you know, if we could do it. And, and I think, okay. uh, uh, I think he'll probably put it in for a year, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, are you emailing those conversations, Joe, or are you having those, uh, no. conversations? Conversations. Okay. Uh, Probably as a courtesy, we might follow those up with an email and loop in either myself or Perry. Well, just, when so we, we have a, you know, a formal, I wanted to find out what Ellendale sure. did. And uh, so I, I was just sort of touching base and see, and, and we, and he, he will want us to send an, an email asking. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. To go forward. Absolutely. No worries. All right, uh, let's talk about um, uh, the, the, the MABTS expense is a budgeted item, I believe. Uh, Jim, would you confirm that we've got that in the budget right quick? I think I, think I have a budget at 300 a year. Okay. But, uh, and I think that's to Joe's point that 100 of that is a catch-up and 100 of that is a go-forward and that leave a remaining 100 that we will pay at a later date. Excuse another me. two two so with that well actually another two hundred if it goes a year okay so you're saying so we're going above one hundred of this is for is to catch up from last year and then a hundred plus another two hundred this year yeah okay for the if it goes through June I mean that, that's the time frame that it, it splits it because we started with them in July of last year. I understand, but we're we're in a we're in a calendar basis. Okay. Uh, which not a problem. All we just need to do is we need to just properly account for the the a hundred dollars that you're proposing that we're in the rears. Uh, I'm fine with us paying them that for last year. Uh, Jim, just make a note, we'll have to take that $100 out of our four discretionary budget line item, which is running a little low. Um, and then um, the $100 that we're bringing to current to the table, we can take out of the budget line item, uh, no issues uh, without having to redo or anything to the budget. Does that all make sense, everyone? Well, actually, thinking about this, um... I mean, we started it at the seminary, um, you know, the middle of the year. And we had already given $300 to um, to the church, to Ellendale. So did we still do 300 for the seminary for last year? Uh, we did do some to the yeah. seminary last year. I guess and I guess I, I don't know we, how. Yeah, we did two hundred total last year. For yeah, I'm not sure how you, year. I'm not sure how it was accounted for or bucketized. Yeah. Um. It may have been a special allocation, which we we'd have to go ask for. Um. 
right now we've got three hundred dollars in the budget for our host, uh, and we're going to draw against that line item a uh, hundred dollars against that line item, and then I believe Joe wants to is asking us to draw a hundred dollars not against that line item but against a different line item so that uh, we can give the seminary basically a hundred dollars for last year, and really just to keep it relatively clean, Jim, without having to go ask um, and get redo our budget. Mm -hmm. What I'm proposing is we take the hundred dollars out of the board's discretionary funding bucket, uh, budget bucket. I think we had a thousand dollars in that bucket. Right. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and then uh, we take a hundred dollars out of that bucket and a hundred dollars out of the budgeted line item to give to the seminary, leaving $200 left in their budget bucket that we could give them later on in the year. Is that what you were thinking, Joe? Whatever. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get them something that, uh, that what we've done in the past uh, I think uh, the 300 that we gave to Ellen Dale, you know, was when this happened, it uh, it threw us to where, you know, we would be off some, whatever fund it needs to come out of. Understood. Uh, the reason I was trying to explain that way is that, that we don't have to redo the budget or ask for approval. We just asked Jim to write the check. Uh, because it's a budgeted, because it's in the budget and the budget line items have not been exceeded, Jim is authorized to write the check immediately. That, that's where I was headed with that, Joe. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jim, if you would go ahead and write that check to the seminary, we can present that at the membership meeting next week. Um, if you'll just note that half of coming out of the board's budget line item and half of that's coming out of the host budget Sorry. line item uh, i would appreciate that sure um and then the 102 dollars for the huntsville ham fest uh that's a reimbursement to joe um is that in the do we have a budget line item for that jim i don't remember and i apologize i should have gotten the budget in front of me yeah i'm looking at it um We do have a line item or a budget line item of three thousand dollars for the Huntsville trip, but uh, some of that would be offset um, by the twenty five hundred that we expect to bring in in bus fares. Um, okay. So usually, usually we end up, you know, eating a little bit, and that um, and that would that usually includes the um, the tables that Joe reserved for us. Okay, so that that does have a budgeted line item. So if you would write that check to Joe uh, and present that to him at the next meeting. All right. Um, I have received a presentation of uh, receipts from Neshoba. Received it this afternoon. So I apologize that I did not get that emailed out to everyone. I literally got it about 10 minutes before the board meeting. Um, our half of the field day foods and refreshments uh, per the receipts is $187.17, and we'll write that out to the Neshoba Club. I believe that is below the budgeted amount for field day. I think I ate yeah. that much in brownies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have uh, 250 budgeted for for field day. So we we made the cut there. Fantastic. All right. So if we'll cut that, and uh, I'll ask Fred Miller with Neshoba how he would like to receive that uh, and, and clarify where he, we should mail that or present that to him. Okay. Um, are there any other bills for payment that need to be presented? Anybody else have any other bills? No, I don't, but I have two other items that I failed to mention. We have we have one outstanding check, it's check number 1621 for $174.69. I know exactly where it is. Okay. <laughs> and stuck then under, stuck under stuck under a magnet on the front of my refrigerator. Okay. 
So I just wanted to I just wanted to remind you in case it was you know folded up inside of a pocket somewhere. Didn't want you to. Uh, I had thought it had actually it. gone through the washing machine. To be honest with you. <laughs> All right, and then um, also I, it doesn't show up on on this month's um, statement, but I did make a, a five dollar deposit to the club's checking account uh, this past Saturday to cover that $5 uh, uh, commission from the ARRL. I'm, I'm not, I just, you know, I'm just going to pay the five bucks. I don't want to go back to the bank again. I've already spoken to them numerous times and they keep telling me that, that the issue is on the ARRL side. <laughs> ARRL says that they, it's, the check cleared. So somebody got paid, but I think the ARRL has a few other bigger fish problems issues right now. And yeah. we and and so and our time our time's worth uh, worth more than the five bucks. So I, I'm just I'm just gonna thank thank you take care of that. Thank thank you, Jim. Appreciate stepping up for that. No <laughs> that was an adventure. That was an adventure. All right. Uh, we'll no other bills. will show up on the report next what? next month. So okay. that's all I had. Fantastic. I'm out of here. If there are, go ahead. No, I was joking. I said I'm out of here. So I'm, I'm not. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, any, if there are no other bills, we'll move into the meeting, our member meeting topics. Mr. John. All right. Well, as people are gathering, it's been customary for me to create a little bit of a slideshow uh, just to kind of put some ideas out there. So uh, this month, the Celebrity Ham of the Month will be none other than Walter Cronkite. And uh, I do want to recognize, even though that the 13 Colonies event will technically be over, it ends the 7th. I would like to see, um, maybe poll our members uh, to see how many people participated and if anybody got all 13 colonies. Um, I also want to put a blurb on there about Logbook of the World is once again functional and uh, make an, uh, put a slide up about Huntsville Ham Fest and one about the Bluff City Blues Ride. So that'll take care of kind of the as people are gathering thing. Uh, I already said part one would be field day review, um, and I will uh, uh, participate in that. And Joe, if you can, and I'll, I'll see if Carolyn can as well, but um, I'm sure we can uh, throw some stuff up on that. And then uh, uh, part two is going to be the fun one. I'm really hoping that we can get some membership participation as well. So um, I'll try to get something over to Mike in Sparks to put a little blurb. Uh, the topic's going to be go bags. And I'm going to uh, define what a glo uh, go bag is. Uh, look at the various types of missions um, that you could use a go bag for. Uh, what types of things you should keep in your go bag and adapting a go bag for amateur radio specific use and uh, where the membership comes in is I would welcome anybody who wants to bring their personal go bag and talk for a minute or two about uh, why they made the selections of, of what to put in it uh, themselves. All right. Any uh, John, questions? John, do you want me to bring one of the hospital suitcases? Sure. Sure. So we have a guy also, Thanks. his last name is Miller. Is that right? Um, that used to be with Memphis Fire, or is that, do you know no, who I'm talking to? Billy Freeman. Billy, oh, yeah, Billy, Billy Freeman, Freeman. Yeah. So maybe you could reach out if you know him. Maybe you could reach out to him because he might be a good one to talk to about go bags also. Because I think yeah. he was on Task Force One uh, mm -hmm. as a comm specialist as well. Yeah, so, he he's he lives a block away. <laughs> oh wow! So yeah, maybe you could. He would probably have some really good input to that as well. Yep. Okay. Let me jot that down. I'll reach out to him.
one field day he brought out Tennessee Task Force One com equipment. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh, that would have been cool. Yes. Um, on that note, too, when we're doing our field day thing, I would really like to try to um, – <laughs> drum up more interest in field day for next year or maybe even if we decide to do winter field day and um um also find out what our membership uh wants what can we do better what can we change what 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 do they want to see us do um so we throw that in as part of our field day stuff would you like to do that as a dedicated field day survey maybe we put it together and publish it in sparks or do you want to do it as a function of possibly the signal report after the meeting or i would think you might want to do it more a broader audience maybe via sparks or an email yeah. blast because we yeah, can i think put sparks together might be same... better okay i can uh work with you john we can put together a via Google form, just like we do for the signal report. We can put together a few little questions that you want to put out and then get a link and put that out in Sparks and make it clickable so that people can take the survey and uh, share it with others. Um, because after reaching a, uh, a 21A station while I was out there, it was a little <laughs> disappointing that we were operating against 3A. So. <laughs> I, I really, I, it's the first, field day that i really got to operate and i i operated for like i out of the 450 of them i just i didn't even call cq just tune in the dial in 20 meters listen and then answer somebody and i had a blast but uh last year or two i felt like we've had like I'll do the 20 meter or, you know, I'll do the 40 meter. And that one individual sat in that chair until his hind end fell off. And then when he was done, he left. And I, I think we were a little bit more sharing of stations this time. Absolutely. Totally may, agree may, with you. I'd look. May. Well, I feel those of us that set up stations, we're uh, station captains um, yeah. and that we should allow others to operate if, if they're interested and want to. Um, my my vision has always been uh, that we always have a schedule so that no one person has to operate that station the entire time. But yeah, um, yep. and that's where I'd love to see us get to. We're going to. We're going to get better. I have a mantra in, in the in the world that I live in. It's we, we don't have to be best. We just have to get better. That's and right. Once you're better, you can get better again. And you keep moving towards uh, you keep moving towards best. But you have to get better first. So yep. I think, that's, John, that's an excellent idea. I'll circle up with you. Yep. We'll try to put together that survey. OK. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to put Tyler on the spot for just a second since, uh, he he's here and he was at field day and he got to have a lot of fun at the go to station, uh, and got to operate. Tell us a little bit about it for just a second while we go down a rabbit hole for a second about it. Yeah. Once we got it, uh, set up and going, it was a blast. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm not even going to lie. My own kids and some of those other kids made an HF contact before I did. Uh, so that was kind of fun. All of them was smiling. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people, I don't remember exactly how many people stopped by that first 18 hours I was there, give or take. Um, but I had a blast. They had a blast. We got to do a little bit of education there. And, uh, I know Mr. Joe, you've, you've seen the emails come in for the people signing up for the tech class. So I know that it brought some in. And I think it's, uh, I, I think having it was definitely a vital piece to the success overall and uh, moving forward as a club. I, I think that's uh, definitely something that I will be returning to year after year because it's fun watching people do it for the first time. It was a lot of fun watching the youth get their first contact, you know, that's further away than across town. Um, and we did hit, uh, we had five youth, 18 or under, uh, make contacts. So we did hit our, our youth field day bonus. So it was quite successful in that regards. And I haven't finished uh, tallying the log, 
but I'll get you the notebook back, uh, Tyler, because I know that was your son's. Uh, but I'll tally the log out of it and, and uh, get that taken care of, and then get all the and put pin put a pin map together for all of us to talk about at the membership meeting as a function of our field day review. All right, John. Anything else on uh, the member meeting? I will circle up with you on um, the survey. Yeah, I don't have anything looking ahead. Um, I, I do have a topic of contesting uh, possibly this fall and uh, going to be soliciting ideas for uh, for other topics. I seem to be. Uh, I may do um, uh, DMR programming. Um, it's been about a year and a half since we've done that. I don't want to run it into the ground, but at the same time, uh, that seem, there seems to be a lot of, of confusion at times about how to do that. And so just if I have an opportunity to do a presentation about that, I may. Yeah, well, That I, I might would... be a good segue into our next topic, which is committee reports on, a.k.a. our repeater committee report. The floor is yours, Dan. Well, we still have repeaters. <laughs> uh, the 8-2 has been behaving lately. Um, sometimes a little bit of static on people, but it's it's been doing well. Um, the 443.7 is doing well. I went in and Joe and I were there one day and bumped the squelch down on it a little bit just to make it a little easier for people to get in. That seems to have helped some. Um, more work on that. Um, the previous committee stuck a plastic sign up on the door to our repeater room and the email for, you know, for a contact repeaters at deltaclub.org and I think that's not an email list, but something that somebody logs into. And I don't know. It's a district. It's a distribution list. I did validate that you will get a copy of that. That would come to the current president at the time. And I think there's one other person in that list. If we need to adjust that, let me know, Dan, we can certainly get that adjusted. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tyler and Adam and Joe and, you, Joe, I, I, I don't know whoever else wants to be on that list. Be good. Um, do uh, we want that kind of traffic to go to that larger group or do we want to keep that traffic a little smaller because that might be uh, someone at the site looking for something or we can talk about that a little more. I, I think we might want to, I don't know that we'd want 20 people on that email, just a thought. Okay. Well, maybe another like a committee. Well, they had that as a committee too. That was the repeater committee, but we don't yep. have to do things that way. Um, I would just we like to put a couple. We have plenty of tools in the workspace, so we can do whatever you want. I would like to just put a couple of cell phone numbers on that rather than the email, and. uh use the repeaters just as our internal, hey, you, I have an idea, or hey, we're going to the site on Saturday list. Hmm. I uh, I kind of like the idea of having an email there and not a cell phone because as as people transit through the the role or the position, the email stays permanent and consistent. Cell phones wouldn't. That's just my two cents. But uh, I, I don't. It, we're we're a group here, so we can talk through the pros and cons of it and decide what ultimately we want to do. I was just giving you my opinion. So ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, uh, as the trustee, it's how you want it to run. So we will work to make sure it runs effectively the way you want to run it. Uh, any other updates on our repeater fleet? Um, so 
I'm sorry. Can I, I, can I interject real quick? This, this is Jim. And I, first of all, yeah. I want to say I'm sorry. I, I, I lost my connection. So I'm, okay. I'm now on my cell phone. But maybe if, if, if there's some concern about like getting a timely notification from somebody, um, you know, who's out at the repeater site and like, you know, hey, I need to talk to these people, let them know that we're doing whatever. Um, maybe include in that repeater at deltaclub.org, you know, maybe include a uh, a cell phone on that, you know, like a, you know, whatever, whatever your, you know, whatever the email uh, notification would be to your cell phone, you know, your number at att.com or sprintpcs.com. I'll, I'll look and see. We might have access to a Google voice number through Workspace. And that might be an ultimate solution. Yeah. Just tag an email and, and put the phone cell phone number that's needed or that's wanted. You know, how many people are going to see it in the first place? Only people at the repeater sites. Yep. Yeah. All very valid options. Uh, Dan will work through um, and figure out exactly what's going to be the best solution for us, and we'll get it implemented for you. You tell us what you need. Yeah, well, whatever it is, I'd like to control it. <laughs> okay. If if, um, that, edit, if if there's a list, I'd like to be able to edit it. Well, that can absolutely be done. Um, you can own the list and you can edit the people that are a part of that list through the workspace tools. You can be the group owner. Um, I don't, I don't know that we want to necessarily jump through that right now, but I'll certainly yeah. take a note and I can set up a time and a place. I did that with uh, Mike as well. And we can go through the Google workspace. I'm just taking okay. a quick note. Um, Anybody so else interested in that walkthrough? All right, go ahead, Dan. Um, so I don't think that ComServe has ordered my, uh, well, our amplifier yet for the 440 repeater. Uh, and I've not pressed him on it until we've got like a tax exempt certificate. But Joe and I were talking, Mr. Plunk there, of at least going ahead and buying a replacement antenna for Methodist North, the um, APRS antenna, and get it back on the air. Um, and we'll just pay the tax for that one and to get it going unless we think we can get our tax exemption done in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, yeah, totally support that. It's and that's done. there's a budgeted repeater line item for that, so we can just execute that, Dan, if you would like to do that. Okay. Yeah, it's going to cost probably around four hundred dollars to replace the antenna. Um, the top two thirds of it got blown off probably by lightning, and landed on the next roof. So, uh, when we get the replacement for that, um. Uh, some of us trusty young guys will go climb up on top of Methodist North and replace the antenna. And when we do that, uh, we need to take down the 220 antenna and see what's wrong with it. Uh, the SWR, like I said, last month was high, so we just turned the 220 repeater off. Uh, so right now, the goal is just to get everything working again and back up to snuff and get the amp going, but um question dan uh do you want to go ahead and purchase that and get reimbursed or do you want to purchase and send a check um i can purchase that and get reimbursed since we're not too worried okay. about tax stuff if you want to do that if you want to do that on your timeline timeline uh we can have jim bring a, the check to you at the next meeting if you've got the receipt by then okay 
that is a budgeted line item. So he just writes the check since it's in the budget. Yep. Um, okay. Well, like I say, the 8 2 works. Uh, you can get into it with a handheld from Fort Pillow. Um, I think some people have had problems getting into it, but they're usually new hams or um, they may have some SWR problems. So that's one thing I'll just say in a meeting and probably on, on a net. Hey, if you're new and you've got an antenna on your car or in your house and you don't have an SWR meter, I'll come over and check it. Um, anyone have any other questions for Dan and the repeaters? Oh, and I filed the paperwork oh. for the FCC. <laughs> oh, you're officially the trustee now. Yep. Well, congratulations. Well, paperwork. Yeah. What, what you do right. is you fill out the 605C change form, the minutes that were signed and I scan those in and email the PDFs to CSCA no CSCSCA at ARRL.org and one of the VEC people uh they go and update it for you. That seemed and, rather painless. And I got a link back with the new certificate so I'll print I'll dump that to a PDF and stick all that on the Google Drive. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, Mary Jean uh, did let me know that she is still looking for people to help her with the bylaws committee. Um, she mentioned that she had one person step forward. She's looking for some more. So uh, as she keeps working to form that, we'll keep uh, watching that for further developments. Um, it's, uh, just be conscious of the time here at seven 30, going to try to power through the rest of these topics. These are a lot of topics that I wanted to talk about, uh, and kind of put on the table. Uh, the July meeting is the one meeting of the year where we don't really have anything other than Huntsville to really, really dive deep into. We don't have field day. We don't have elections. We don't have other things. So I wanted to take a minute and just, uh, Let's talk about something that was important and kind of near to me, which is membership. We'll get to those things in a minute. A couple of things that are near and dear to me. Um, I did reach out to um, another insurance brokerage about errors and omission insurance. They have not been able to get back to me. So I still have not been able to close that follow-up item uh, that I had committed to getting back. Uh, still working through it. Uh, as soon as they get back to me, I'll share what they come back to me with. Um, Jim's already talked about our tax exempt certificate and some of the reasons behind why we're trying to pursue that. Um, so with that, um, he's, he brought that to the table. Um, so let's talk about Sparks and the format of Sparks. Um, I really, really want to see us work through and streamline Sparks um, and move it into more of a the uh, the new content at the top of the articles and moving some of the older content, some of the historical content deeper into Spark so that it doesn't get lost. Um, and I would, uh, I'm going to lean on Tyler and Adam on this a little bit and put you on the spot just a smidge because you're, you're just brand new, your first meeting with us. But one of the things that I, uh, and it's nothing other than, I do want to take our training. I don't want to lose our historical training articles and the, the information that we have about training, but I do want to see us split that apart so that our current training is an article at the top of Sparks, our historical training articles down at the bottom of Sparks and not all jammed together. Um, I, I, Joe, I appreciate all the effort and energy you pour into it, uh, but I'd love to see more than one name in the first five pages of Sparks. I'd love to see everybody have a, a section of Sparks in the first five or six pages. And then uh, then the rest can kind of push down a little bit. 
Um, so, Mike, um, if we can work on that for Sparks this weekend, um, I should be available to kind of talk through some of the ideas that I want to see uh, work through with that and kind of freshen that up a little bit. Uh, we've got a great opportunity with pictures from field day. Um, I'll try to take the pictures that were shared with me and upload those into the Google space and put them on. Uh, there's a shared drive that all the board has access to called, uh, called Photo Archive. Uh, so if you've got pictures of, uh, and this is a tangent, I apologize. If you've got pictures of past events that are hanging around on your hard drive of your computer or hanging around on your phone, um, you can gather those up and you can put them up in the Google workspace on the shared drive. Every board member will have access to that um, by virtue of being on the board. Um, and you can add photos into that shared folder. It's just highlighted by year. You can make a month folder or an event folder. You should have full uh, creative ability to create folders as you need to store and archive photos in that uh, folder. And we've got quite a bit of space, so we're not limited there. Um, and then some of the, I'd love to see one of the other things that I would challenge our board members, I'd love to see all of us try to write some sort of little Sparks article. Doesn't have to be a lot. Doesn't have to be, you know, uh, an eight paragraph essay or even five paragraphs. I'd love for all of our board members to try to throw something into Sparks uh, about your about the hobby, about why you're interested in it or why you stay interested in it, just to show different aspects of why the hobby is interesting to us for our membership. I mean, I know I have a different interest of the hobby than Perry and than Joe and John. We all have slightly different interests. And if we just take an opportunity to showcase those different interests with just a short, simple little blurb every month, it gives the membership a different view into the hobby that they may not have seen otherwise. Just some thoughts on that. All right. Uh, that's me talking for two minutes. Now let me open up and listen for a couple of minutes. Some feedback or observations on that? Yeah, I would love to freshen it up so, uh, you know, uh, we can talk uh, more about it lately, uh, later, uh, if you would like. Um, you know, we looked out uh, at several other clubs uh, newsletter and they only had like a one or two pager so I don't know if that's where you're wanting to go to for this I mean they didn't you know the way our format is set up is that you know we talk through you know uh, you know we have the announcements and we have the president's mm -hmm. corner and then we can uh, what we go into the um, you know, the, the minutes, we have the treasurer's report, you know, the minutes of the board of directors, and then we have the meeting, uh, minutes, and then we go into training and then it's kind of just, you know, those are our, our foundational pillars, I guess, uh, yep. of the club. And, uh, you know, that right alone is like, you know, 12 to 13 pages. Cause you know, we've been yeah. getting, having a lot of, announcements and stuff like that of late so you know i'm really not sure you know uh you know how condensed that you really want to make this uh if you want to move some of it to the website uh you know how how we really want to accomplish that but uh yep. you know uh I, you know. I, I think the simplest explanation to start off with mike is just a kind of a reordering you know yeah. We know that we're publishing the minutes and the treasurer's report and all those things in Sparks. They don't have to be at the top of Sparks, meaning our members know to go to look for them. They can be at the end of Sparks. They can go look for them. What I want them to see at the top of Sparks is let's see the president's corner. Let's see the announcements. Let's see what the member meeting is going to be about. Let's see about the go back show and tell. In the first two pages, here's all the meaty stuff that you're going to get of why you're coming to the Delta Club meeting or why you're in the Delta Club. And then if you want to go read the minutes or the treasurer's report, well, I'll scroll down to page 20 because it's there. It'll be there. We're not going to take it out, but it's not in the first five pages. It's at the end. Because okay. really the important why, what do we want the members to see first information is at the top of Sparks, the, okay. the hook, so to speak, the yeah. interesting. The exciting um, stuff, I guess. Yes, sir. Absolutely. 
Okay. Absolutely. And training's exciting. Uh, go bags are exciting. Field day is exciting. You know, all of those things, the little articles that we write about why we're in ham radio or whatever you want to write about, all of those things are in, exciting. And a treasurer's report, while important, not very exciting. And minutes of our meetings, while t amazing, they're not very exciting. They can be at the end of the articles and people can go look for them. I see the sad face, Barry. I understand. Uh, very, very important. Uh, very necessary, but not the first thing I want to find in Sparks. Uh, any other questions, thoughts? I, 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 like I said, I spoke for a couple of minutes. I want to listen for more. I want to listen for at least twice as much. Uh, Joe, I'll just say that I'm new to the club, and when I was looking for clubs to join, uh, I found the website and went to the drop down and it just says Sparks. I have no idea what that is. And then, so once you know what Sparks is, you click on it. And then the top one was January, which was relevant in February. But, you know, we should kind of highlight the, the newest one at the top somewhere, or maybe on the, the home page or something like that. Because if you're, if you're looking for a new club, you want one that's lively. You want to see what they're doing, up, up to date kind of stuff, how active they are. So, if that if that were right. feedback better, then then that'd be uh, draw more people mm -hmm. in maybe. And to a point of that, Adam, um, I don't know what we have or how it works, but we do have the opportunity through our Google Workspace to host a Google site, and to potentially mm -hmm. leverage some uh, search engine optimization via that. That's a little bit down the road. That's a couple of better steps later. But yeah. we, we certainly have that as a function of our workspace. Yeah. I'm, I'm just talking about uh, reorganizing it so you can so you know what it is the second you open the website and start looking around and you find the newest issue mm -hmm. uh, more more premium. Yeah. Excellent Basically point. Basically go in yeah. reverse good, order. Good. Yeah, good right. good point, Adam. Yeah, excellent we, point. I, I will look and see if that is an option for because you know we're using a CAN program um, on what is it GoDaddy, uh, so they are they are doing our hosting, and I will see if there is a way that I can list them in opposite order. But that, that is uh, that's really good feedback. Yeah, yeah, even even something on the front page. Hey, the new Sparks is here sparks newsletter and you can click on it you don't just on the front that might be an excellent yep just a quick link a quick link to the current sparks issue yep okay not a site i want to be very cognizant something easy yep i want to be very cognizant of we got about 15 minutes left and i don't yep. want to run over so i'll be cognizant of that be very respectful of everybody's time um, Joe, you want to give us a quick, uh, well, let me refresh something real quick, uh, to echo what Mike has asked for. Let's be, uh, and I'm pointing all of my fingers at me cause I'm the most guilty party. Let's try to get our sparks articles into Mike, uh, sooner rather than later, especially this, uh, edit cycle. So we can have a little bit of extra time to work on them. Um, try to get those to him by Friday night. And, uh, one more thing, if I could, uh, Perry, um, or do you send the new member email addresses? Uh, how how does our uh, email list get updated now? Have you been sending that to Mr. Joe, or how does has that been working? I believe Joe gets those from my master list that I send out, but I don't want to speak for him. Okay, can you include me on that, please? Yes, I believe when I publish that, I send that to everybody. But if okay. I don't, Mike, I'll make sure that you get one. All right. Very good, sir. Thank you. Just you do what you normally me. do. And hey. if I don't find it, I'll holler at you. I, yeah. Okay. I usually put you. that hey. out, uh, hopefully, sometime soon after the meeting next week. Check. Thank you. Once I can add all my attendance. Um, I'll reach out to you. I'd love to see us move that into a live Google Sheets document so that it, everybody can just, if you get a new in, an email list, so we can have a sheet that's members and we can have a sheet that's everybody that else wants to get sparks and we just keep them live and we can feedback on it. and It just lives in our workspace. Okay. 
I'll, I'll reach out to you and we'll try to make that happen. Um, Joe, uh, the July training class, you want to take a couple of seconds and uh, bring us up to speed on that. We hear the announcements on a regular basis, and we thank you profusely for running training for us. Uh, we've got nine students uh, scheduled for the class. Uh, the one person that signed up at field day, I gave her a call and email and haven't gotten a thing from her, so I, I, I doubt if if the person's going to attend. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, we did, uh, from the Collierville training that I did, there was one person that, that signed up for the class who also came the field day. So that's good. Uh, and then uh, Huntsville uh, got uh, 13 reservations and nine paid. That, and our magic number on that, Joe, is 25 or I'd say more magic like number? 28, really. Okay, 28? 28 to 30. All right, so if you have it, um, my challenge to all of our board members, please ask a member to go on the board on the bus trip and ask them to uh, pay their money. Just find, find, your, find a couple of members and ask them. Uh, if they've never been, I'm one of them. I'm on the bus. Uh, Pending something catastrophic, I'm looking forward to it this year. Uh, ask somebody to go on the bus. Let's let's have a fun bus ride down. How many of the board have been on the bus trip before? Hi. Okay. So we've got some board members that haven't made it. Maybe we can make a make it an all board event. All right, now move right along. Um, Not this year, I want to take a <laughs> okay. I got, I'm going to be Fair serving uh, on that weekend, so I can't attend. I'm right. not supposed uh, to be on to... call, but it changes from time to time. <laughs> I understand. Uh, a quick call out, real quick, since we talked about serving. A uh, quick call out to Tyler. Tyler is going to be uh, serving uh, on. Are you going active duty? No negative. It's our field uh, it, training exercise uh, that it, weekend. Um, I did uh, get some active duty orders for uh, because it's over thirty days. It's considered active duty, but it's it's only thirty eight days that I'll be gone. Okay. So uh, Tyler's joining the board, and he'll miss he'll miss we'll miss him in August. That's okay. We appreciate you and thank you for your service. All right. I want to take a quick minute. Um, and I, I spent a quite a bit of time diving through our membership numbers. Uh, Perry has done a really fantastic job of keeping that spreadsheet up to date. And I have taken the spreadsheet that I built kind of to build these numbers, moved it over into Perry's sheet and want to email it back to him so that we can talk about it. I apologize that it's a touch small. Can everybody see the kind of the graphs? And I'll talk about what those really, or what this data set means. And I'll try to wrap us up and get us out of here by eight o'clock. Um, we are doing well this year from a membership perspective. Um, we are uh, officially grown this year over last year. Uh, last year, we had 164. This year, we're at 166 active members. Now, what does that membership breakdown profile kind of look like? Let's talk about that for just a second. Um, in 2023, um, we had um, 19, uh, uh, excuse me, we had 23 brand new members join our club in uh, 2023. Hang on one second, team. Um, and so far this year, 11 of those new members have renewed. So that's this number. Can you see the cursor that's right here? That's the 11 over 23. So that means that we've retained 47% of our new members. Um, the year before, in 2023, we had 19 members join us in 2022, and we retained 13 of them in 2023. 
really good year. We retained 68% of them. So that means what we've got now is we've had 89 of our renewals for from 2023 have renewed. That means we've got of the members that we had in 2023, 36 renewals are left. 24 are not new members. Those are members that have renewed in some shape, form, or fashion in the past. We've got that breakdown, and I'm gonna, uh, I'll probably send out a little follow-up email and see if any of the board members actually know some of these members and ask if we can make some personal invitations to these members to renew. But the ones that I'm most interested in are the 12 new members that haven't renewed. Because I really want to understand um why those new members joined our club and didn't and then did not want to stay in our club to me that's a very interesting question that i want to under have a better understanding of the answer to because with the answer to that question we can conceivably then start really growing because that is the compelling information of it answers the question of why do people want to join and be in the delta club if we know the answer to that question, we can then program that, we can socialize that, we can have the right social activities, the right outdoor activities, whatever that answer is, we have the ability to go program that answer so that we can get members that want to stay active in our club. Um, I'll pause there and ask if there are any questions if there, uh, about the kind of what I'm talking about or if the numbers make sense or observations. Perry, you're chewing your pencil like you want to say something. Has there been any way of quantifying whether any of these uh, 12 um, were, were potentially caught up in some of the turmoil that we experienced earlier in the year? Um, so those, those would be from 2023. Okay. So they started out as new members in 2023, and all we would ask them to do – is renew in 2024. And I can, let me see if I can pause uh, the screen share for a second and uh, share a different screen and I'll pull that up and I'm going to do, I'm going to be very, very, I'm going to try real hard to not go over. Is that a, a, that's a better view of kind of the, the bigger numbers. Um, and what I can do here is I'll scroll up for a second so here are all of our new members in 2024. And here are the, the 2023 numbers. And I probably, and I'll, out of respect, I'll do this real quick. Let me hide that column. Um, um, come on, hide. Oh, well. Um, that this is our the the members uh, that renewed in twenty that were new members in twenty twenty four. I'm going to um so these were the number these were our members that joined us in twenty twenty three, and with the work that I've done, uh kind of based on kind of how I rewrote the, the nomenclature, I can then look and say, okay, they were new in 2023. They were renewed in 2024. Like Philip Baker has it renewed. So let's reach out to Philip Baker and say, Hey, Philip, why didn't you want to renew your Delta club membership? Yeah. He's national it, it weather service. Answer. He's national weather service. He gave a presentation with us. And I think that was when he uh, joined that year. And I don't know what's happened since. Sure. And then, you know, I, that's these are the, the 12 people that I, you know, I would love to have a conversation, not necessarily me have the conversation with them, but us as a board have conversations with these 12 people going, hey, what, what, why were you not interested in renewing your Delta Club membership? And then leveraging this same kind of philosophy, we'll track this for next year in 2025 to make sure that all of our new 2024 members um, renew. And then that gives us kind of this renewal tracking number that I was creating. And But we also see that we're growing. 
you know, the downturn, the, the downturn stopped in 2022 and we're starting up now. So that's a very positive, I think that's a very, very positive thing for us to take and understand and recognize that that's, that's a great thing for us to have um, within the organization, within our organization to be able to say that we are now actively growing now. Um, I'm very excited to have that as an option. Um, again, I'll pause for just a quick second. Is there any questions on that? Is there any questions on how we would like to for, kind of pursue those uh, people and ask them a question about uh, about their renewal? Yeah, I'm ashamed to say that very few of those names I even recognized. There were a few, but I, I feel like I should have recognized more of those names. Put, put it back okay. up, Joe Duke, you won't get that. Mike Lemma's uh, brother-in-law and Mike Luma was on it. Uh, well, it showed Mike Luma renewed for 2024, so he'll be one on it, next uh, year's he, that does it most likely. He, he renewed. Um, I can uh, let me snag the names real quick, and I'll, I'll I'll put them over here where we can see them. And and even on some of those, were they ones that got the free first year membership because of, of the class, and then they just disappeared? Or I don't know. I I've got the training logs, um, and I I haven't been able to correlate those yet, Dan. Okay. It is on my it is on my list. Even that. so, we would still want to retain those if possible. Yes. So I think there would be value in trying to find out why, you know, okay, well, I joined for the balance of the year because I got trained through Delta Club and then that just wasn't for me and, and find out why. Yeah. Do we send out a, anything, a follow-up to say, hey, you haven't renewed for 2024 yet? That that is definitely on my list of action items to go do. Uh, just just send out an it. email to those 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 folks to say, "Hey, you haven't done it," and yeah. let them and, and put in that email. Say, "Hey, you know, just just mm -hmm. if, if you're not going to return, not going to renew, just kind of give us an overall view." Of the or or do possibly. one of the surveys possibly? You know, the yeah, like done. a survey or something. Yeah, that you, you know. Okay. So Joe, there's the I, I I'm kind of struggling a little bit to get them up, but I got them back up so you can see the list. Is that that's the whole list? Okay, Lisa Al Alex is not a new member. She had been a member. No, she's renewed. She's renewed. I don't have the uh, she renewed already. That's just the list of new members. Uh, Baker Baker Phillip. Philip Baker and Jeff Klein. So what I can do is these. Uh, I didn't have the list scrubbed knowing this gets published. I needed to scrub the list. So I'll try to scrub the list. I'll scrub the list and email it out to everyone for some feedback. Um, so that we can uh, get some feedback on. Um, who who people might who who our board members think might renew. So look for that as an action item. I'll send that out. I'm only okay. up to seven, so I'm good. Um the other thing, and then I'm gonna I'm running over, so I apologize. Um I wanted to make us aware, just a real quick call out. We do have shared drives in our Google workspace. Uh, Perry, you leveraged that for the meeting agendas. Joe, you leveraged the meeting agenda and added to the shared documents. There's a photo archive out there. We've got a publications directory. We've got repeater documents that we're starting to store out there. Um, Tyler and Adam, I'll circle up with you shortly and make sure that we get your email addresses active and get you logged into those. Um, and then um, there is, uh, I did want to make everybody aware Tyler and Adam, I will add you to um, 
there this uh, distribution list dark be board of directors. That's that email. If you send an email to that distribution, it goes to both the Delta club.org email as well as the personal email address uh, for the position as well. So uh, that's a really good way to make sure that communication is going out to the board because it's sending it both to our archive for the Delta club.org email as well as to the personal email of whoever's holding that position at the time. And then uh, the last um, the last thing that I would love to get is I need a couple of additional volunteers to kind of work with me um, and kind of walk through and start looking at Ham Club online. I want to circle back around to that. That is a member management platform that's free to Ham Clubs. Um, it's free. They don't ask for it, but they do ask if you could make a donation to help them by making a donation. One of the biggest pluses that Ham Club Online has for us is it allows us for, to collect our renewal payments uh, online by a, a, a PayPal uh, integration. And it also will automate that process by sending 90, 60, 30 day notices out to our membership, letting them know their renewal is up. So I need a couple of member uh, board members that want to kind of take some time to examine that and walk through that and kick the tires on that. Um, I can't do it all by myself and want to get some input on that. And that's the last thing between uh, us and getting to the end. Yeah, I don't mind taking a look. All right, Dan, yeah. thank you. I like that. I'll do it too. All right, Tyler, thank you. I'd be happy to look at Perry? that, you, Joe. Yeah. All right, thank you, Perry. Anyone else? Y'all help. Um, Adam, okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. That's kind of all of the talking points that I had. Um, real quick, uh, are there any reports or activities that any board member would like to mention that they haven't had a chance to mention? All right, hearing none. Uh, we don't have any old business to put back on the table. Um, I, I do have a, a slide in here for just kind of topics that we want to park if because it's a shared document. And if we find think of something that we want to put there, it's just something to stick out there. At some point, I do want to circle back around to our logo. I was this is actually Ned's jacket, I think. No, is it Ned? Or, yeah, Ned, I think it's Ned's. I love the fact that service education and fellowship were once a part of our logo and would love to figure out how to get them back into our logo. So I stuck that in the parking lot. Um, Joe's talked about uh, ham fest. Um, and then I personally would ask each and every one of you to ask one person that's not a member to join our club. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. I second that. All right. John Reiner's made a motion to adjourn, and Dan has seconded that motion. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. We are, we are adjourned. I apologize for running a few minutes over, everyone. Thank you so much for your time uh, that you give to the Delta Club. It is very much appreciated. Thank you.